All right, so we're working on this uh, WB entrance door. So when I picked this bus up, somebody had removed the door latch pin, uh, striker pin, or bolt. So this door was just, you have to lock the deadbolt down there to hold the door closed. So what I determined the issue was is that this here, you can see these two springs here, I've, I've added those two springs because somewhere, I think it's back in the corner back there where it's really hard to get to. There's a spring in there that's supposed to bring this back, back up. And it was sagging down, so it wasn't allowing it to latch properly. So I put these two springs on here to bring this back up and latch it. So now when you pull the handle here, or you pull the handle... The other problem I'm having now, I'm going to do some adjustment on it. But if you pull either handle, so the other handle's out there, outside... So this would be the coming from the handle here, pulls down the rod, and that releases the door from either outside or inside. There's a handle here, inside, and then it's lower outside. So they have two handles on this WB. Um, the other thing I'm going to work on now is the striker pin is loose. Well, it's not the loop, it's not the pin is loose, but what it is is actually, if you look at here, it's got this little roller on it. Let me get it in the camera for you. Um, so this little roller right here is, yeah, is loose, and I think that's what is uh, giving all the door, allowing the door to jiggle. So I'm going to see if I can try to uh, find something to take up the swap on that. But yeah, that was all that was wrong with it really is this, this piece was sagging down like that, you know, because there was no spring return on it and it wasn't allowing the latch to catch and operate properly. So I'm assuming the previous owner took it apart, took that off of there because it wasn't able to latch properly and just never fixed it. So we got the, the door panel off of it there. We'll have to put that back on and I'll show you. That's a bit of a pain to get out of there, but uh, we'll show you how that goes in there when we put it back together here in a bit. All right. Okay, so I got this uh, striker pin bolt off. So what it looks like to me, there's so there's a little piece of see rubber or something that was trying to make up the gap between that bushing. So what I'm going to do is flip this over so it wears on the other side, and I'm going to try to see if I can find something to take up that play in there. So I hope you can hear me. I got the air conditioner running in here. It's a little warm today. Um, so I'm going to try to take this little piece of DOT tubing. I've already cut it to length. And then I'm going to split it. Um, and then slip that in there and see if that'll uh, take up the slack. Tough stuff, my cutter thing, I'm gonna cut it. Split. Slip this over here. Oh, this guy here. Here, might be 
too thick. Just take some persuasion. Let's see if I can't uh, trim that a little bit, persuade it on it. Alright, so I had to abandon the DOT tube and it was, it was just too small. So I ended up with a piece of this, it's just some uh, pressure washer cleaner jug. A strip of that I cut and then just wrapped it around there. You can see it in there. And this washer will go on there. And that took up all the slack in that bushing. And also give it a little bit of cushion. It should last pretty while, well, pretty good while. So we'll see how that works. All right, so we're going to install this striker pin. There's a little stainless steel scutcheon plate that goes on here first, and then the striker bolt. I may have to try to adjust this or the hinge. This thing should move around in there. I don't yeah, it moves back and forth a little bit, but they didn't cut this back far enough, it doesn't look like here. So I may end up having to try to see if I can cut that back a little further to see if we need any more adjustments, but we're going to try it out first. I'm going to try to push it as far back as it'll go. I'm hoping with that and that plastic, and then I'm also I flipped that thing around so that ridge where it was wearing out is on the opposite side now, so hopefully that should tighten it up. Snug it up there, and then we'll see how she closes. that's pretty good I think it probably just needs a door seal so hopefully that'll put a door seal on it eventually I'll let the owner know about that or he'll probably watch this video so but um, yeah I think that'll do it the doors working good now Now we'll just get this cover back on and button it up. Okay, one thing I want to show you that these have is this electric door lock. So this thing comes in here and turns the door handle. Um, what I noticed is something fell off when I was pulling this all apart. And what it was was a little spacer to go behind us. So if I can get you in there. Yeah. So, yeah, just behind there. You need a spacer between there and see they put washers to spacer it off the deadbolt. That that'll suction together, but you need to have a spacer between there to hold this uh, little piece here. Because what it does is it's got little splines inside of it. It's hard to see. I don't know. Yeah, those little splines go into the back of this guy. That's the, the handle. So we got to cut a little piece of, of this. I'm going to put this DOT tubing. Cut a little piece of this DOT tubing you stick in there to shim that out. So what happens is that thing, see that thing has electric solenoid in it. it it'll turn that thing, you know, and unlock or lock the door. Okay, so I got this all put back together. It's, I couldn't hold the camera in, put all this in there. So I'm, I cut that little piece of DOT brake tubing you can see right there in there, and this little piece. So when all that stuff is sandwiched together, um, this will be pretty close to being flush with this metal, because then you get a um, that door cover. 
this guy goes on. Can you see that? And that is about the thickness of that. So when that sits in there, see it's about flush with there. So you actually, I may be a little short. I may need to make that longer. It actually looks like it needs to be actually sticking out. Closer to there. I think I'm going to cut another piece because, yeah, that actually has got to sit inside. So that means it's going to have to push that out in order to engage into this. So, yeah, maybe cut another piece. All right, I went back and forth a couple times trimming it and getting it just where I want it. I think that's going to be good. Um, so now we'll get the, the panel on here. I gotta throw some screws back in this. I was gonna take this bottom section off, but realized I didn't need to, so. Um, yeah, get those in and then we'll get the panel back on. All right, get this panel back on. Tricky, we'll see how we can do this. We kind of slid it in a little bit. We've got to get these wires in first. What I do is kind of slide it underneath this trim piece. Try to get all this plastic in there. And you're a little high actually. So that way you can go down behind this stainless. Uh, then you got to kind of bow it out. We got it somewhat in there, we just got to get this little lip tucked in. The edge here, this little um, the vinyl on there, kind of has to be tucked in.
Alright, so now we just gotta put the door handle on here. I'm sorry, the deadbolt. You gotta make sure you keep your hand on the outside of that deadbolt, otherwise it won't move around on you. Try to get this off here and pour these screws up pretty good. Just want to make sure the outside lock cylinder is up and down, straight up and down. So that guy is on there good. And then, yeah, this guy is. Straight up and down, so needs to, needs to turn just a little bit. So I'll loosen it back up. So that's got that all snugged up. Door closes real nice. Put on the, uh, the lock. these guys little covers on <laughs> 